You've read the signs as well as I. The growing powers of chaos makes no distinction between the living and the dead. Nagash must rise, or our kingdoms of silence will fall, and yours will be the first. Arkhan the Black you underestimate the power of the dark side. I must obey my master. Darth Vader Arkhan the Black is the first and most loyal follower of Nagash, who somehow went from a wasteful in a minor noble family to a super badass necromancer warrior. He has decimated kingdoms as Arabi never fully recovered from the war he waged against it, following Nagash's first death. Due to his power he has fought for and against many of the tomb kings as a warlord for hire. Before 8th edition WFB Arkan had no personality beyond being Nagash's right hand lich and was only playable in the original 4th edition Warhammer armies, Undead Armor Book. He came back as a playable character in the 8th edition Tomb King's Armor Book, with the only new law being Arkan became a warlord for hire and his newest plan to restore Nagash. The end times were surprisingly kind to Arkan. Following this, He's now an introspective, mercantile smartest and he kind of gets the girl. See below. He's also Warhammer Fantasy's first hero killer, being the first playable special character to kill off other playable special characters, starting with Warhammer Fantasy's first, Heinrich Kemmler, before the audiobooks and video game. Vincent Price was considered by a few fans as a good choice to voice him, as of now. He is voiced by Ramon Tikaram in the audiobooks and an unknown VA in the Total War video games. While not as ideal as Vincent Price would have been, they do a good job. See below for more. Warhammer Fantasy Early History Arklan was born into a rich noble family of Kemri during the reign of King Thutep. Despite his lineage, Arklan was the black sheep, Jedid, of the family because he often forsook his duties to energy in petty crime and serial gambling. On top of this, most of Arkan's money was spent on drugs, the aforementioned gambling and whoremongering at the Temple of Asaph, which practiced ritual prostitution at the time, but reputedly he had to pay double before any of the priestesses went near him. Black sheep joke aside, Arkan earned the nickname the Black as a human from his appalling dental hygiene and his love of chewing juice erut, giving him the ancient equivalent of meth mouth. His teeth were reduced to black shards. And he probably had bad breath too. Side note, all official art depicting his skeleton form has normal, except for one piece with fangs, bone white teeth. Mabai Nagash has a very good dental plan. Maybe that's why Arkan's so loyal to him a later retcon made it so neither the teeth nor the skull on his skeleton from are his original ones. Arkan's first true death was retconned into being from decapitation. Aforementioned retcon later got retconned again via the Black Library trilogy The Rise of Nagash. In it, it is explicitly stated that, after Arkan got decapitated by Abhorash, he was buried along with his severed head. Said head was reattached when Nagash resurrected Arkan. Vizier of Kemri when Nagash sought a cabal of followers to assist him in usurping the throne of Kemri he found them in Arkhan and his compatriots. They were convinced by a demonstration of Nagash's newly created art of necromancy, and first supported Nagash by kidnapping victims off the streets to both supply Nagash with test subjects and undermine his brother's rule. Arkan and the others started to learn rudiments of necromancy themselves during this time, and he was the first of Nagash's followers to partake of Nagash's elixir, becoming the first of Nagash's so-called immortals. When Nagash finally usurped his brother's throne, declaring himself king of Kemri, Arkan was appointed his vizier. Arkan carried out Nagash's orders with a loyalty and alacrity he never shown before due to Nagash giving Arkan everything he wanted and relying on Nagash for more of the elixir. This tyrannical regime led the priest kings of Nehekara to form an alliance against Nagash, and Arkan served as the great necromancer's foremost lieutenant in the struggle that followed, putting his newfound necromantic talents to use helping maintain Nagash's undead armies. Battle after battle was waged, but inevitably the more numerous forces of the priest kings proved too much, and Nagash and his armies were forced back into the city of Kemri. In the battle for Kemri, Arkan led the suicidal counterattack that allowed Nagash to escape the army of the Seven Kings, single-handedly holding off his foes with spell casting and sword play for an hour before he fell. There are different accounts of Arkan's defeat across the editions of Warhammer. 
Some random schmo managed to hit Arkhan in the heart with a thrown spear and Arkhan died, his body consumed by black flames and leaving behind a skeleton. While the Nehekharans destroyed the bodies of Nagash's other followers, they didn't desecrate Arkhan's remains out of respect for his baddest last stand and simply built a stone cairn over them. First version, same as before. Except instead of respect for his last stand they didn't desecrate Arkhan's body because Arkhan gave a curse with his dying breath that anyone who touched his bones would die horribly. Second version. Lamash is a snuck up on Arkhan, carrying a prototype Cathayan gun. He used this to shoot Arkhan in the heart and incapacitate him for transport to Lamia. The spear thrown into the heart by an unknown soldier was a cover story made up by Lamash as a most recent version and canon as of the end times. Imprisonment in Lamia after his defeat, Arkhan and one of the Nagash's nine books were smuggled to Lamia. There, Arkhan was restored to life and kept as a prisoner of Lam Shizar and his Cabal buddies, including Ashuran, W. Soran and Abhorash. The latter wasn't interested in immortality and is only there to protect his king, to teach them Nagash's magic. Lam Shizar was not smart. And while W. Soren was a capable student, he kept what he learned to himself. Lacking magical ability, Lama Shiza brought in his sister Neferita to aid in the lessons. Because she is a priestess of the moon goddess and they have knowledge on potion making. Neferita, caught between this and trying to prevent their Cathan trade partners from screwing Lamia over, visited Arkhan to seek out his dark knowledge. She wanted Arkhan to teach her as well and used her charm to try and persuade him. To their mutual surprise, Neferita sympathized with the imprisoned lich and formed a genuine rapport with him that grew into something more. Arkhan gladly taught her magic, and when Neferita offered a reward, Arkhan only asked for the chance to ride a horse with silver bells on its harness through the deserts at night. Arkhan despaired of captivity and greatly appreciated any freedom he got. Eventually Arkhan's tutelage, and knowledge he gave Neferita about her brother's cabal members, led to Neferita overthrowing Lamashiza, reducing him to a figurehead under her thumb, and taking the throne for herself. Neferita kept her word to Arkhan and granted his request right down to the silver bells. This turned out to be a grave error however when the king, still with many supporters, tried to have Neferita assassinated with a deadly magical poison. At the time Arkhan had come back from a nighttime excursion on the outskirts, and only learned about this after two of the least intelligent members of the Cabal tried to assassinate him. Although Arkhan managed to slay them, he realized they'd gone after Neferita too, and by the time he reached Neferita it was already too late. Arkhan tried to save Neferita, roping a random servant girl named A.R. into helping him with the ritual, but his methods reacted with Neferita's blood and she appeared to die. Furious and determined to have revenge, Arkhan snuck into the royal palace and assassinated Lamashiza with the king's own Cathayan gun. The state he was in caused Arkhan to overlook A.R., who fled to Liberus and spilled the beans to Kalida, the king's bodyguard Abhorash, though too slow to save his king beheaded Arkhan in personal combat for his crime. Unbeknown to Arkhan, his magic had in fact saved Neferita and turned her into the first vampire. With her brother dead, Neferita took over the throne and then had Arkhan's corpse discreetly but respectfully buried in the Lamian necropolis. Despite Abhorash recommending that she cremate Arkhan, the Lich King many years later Nagash, now secured in his northern fortress Nagashiza and more powerful than before, decided to take his revenge on the priest kings of Nehekhara. Although generations had passed, he had not forgotten his most loyal lieutenant. Knowing he would soon have need of him Nagash had Arkhan rise from his tomb and join him in the north. Once again, he led his master's forces against the united priest kings alongside W. Soran. The two became bitter rivals, with Arkhan considering W. Soran reckless and W. Soran considering Arkhan cowardly and argued often, when they weren't disagreeing on the best way to conduct the battles, they bickered over which of them was the better wizard, which form of undeath was best or who was Nagash's favorite. Between their mutual animosity and the great leadership and military prowess of King al Qadisar of Khemri, they were unsuccessful despite a long campaign. When Nagash enacted the first part of his great ritual, 
Arkhan commanded Nagash's undead army once more and this time easily defeated the plague-riddled Nihagharans, taking Alcad as a prisoner, staying in Kemri to take control of Nagash's supreme army when the second part of the ritual raised all of Nihagharas dead. Arkhan was instead put on the back foot when Nagash's assassination left the Risen Kings with their own willpower and later forced to flee when Setra returned. United under Setra, the wrath of the Tomb Kings was simply too great. Intent on wreaking vengeance on the living for Nagash's death or becoming an undead ruler in his own right to relish his newfound freedom. Depending which law you follow, Arkhan ransacked Nagashiza, fighting his longtime rival W. Sorin and other returned immortals in the process, and left with a few of Nagash's most important books. He then marshaled an army and attacked Araby, battering its kingdoms for generations in what Arabian chroniclers would come to call the Wars of Death, inhabiting the desert wastes that surround Araby. Arkhan would lead his armies upon an Arabian city, raising it to the ground before withdrawing again to the deserts. At some point Ockham made himself a sweet new ride, a flying chariot made from the body, wings and still beating heart of a manticore and pulled by four skeleton horses. It bears a resemblance to Setra's chariot of the gods, something Ockham probably did on purpose. Later he established himself once again in Nehekura in his fortress of old, the Black Tower. From here his repeated raids and incursions, while not a major threat, soon became more than just a mere nuisance. Repeatedly, Setra was be forced to do battle with Arkhan and whilst he had a vastly superior sense of strategy and better troops at his command, their battles always resulted in a stalemate as Setra could never hope to match the great necromantic power of Arkhan. Therefore Arkhan would submit to Setra's authority and swear fealty before once again defying him just a few years later. This stalemate might have been broken had the other tomb kings assisted, but Setra was too proud to ask for their help, and writer's bias ensured he forgot he could just order them to help him, and most considered Arkhan a valuable, if untrustworthy, ally. These constant battles against Setra did serve to improve Arkhan's tactical and strategic skills through trial and error. Over the following centuries, Arkhan busied himself with hunting down various treasures of Nagash in order to serve his master on the day of his return. However, for some reason, he didn't rejoin Nagash when he was resurrected and engaged in his northwards campaign against Sigma. When not doing something for Nagash or providing military aid to certain tomb kings, Arkhan stayed in his tower practicing magic or losing himself in years or even decades of introspection and reminiscing. Arkhan had for a long time foreseen the end times coming and knew Nagash was one of the few beings who could be relied upon to defeat the chaos gods. Nagash himself also recognized this threat. And after the night of the restless dead fiasco, Nagash fast-tracked his latest restoration plan by several centuries and told Arkhan to get to work. In order to restore Nagash, Arkhan needed to gain many of the items Nagash had imbued with his power over the years. Already possessing two of his nine books, Arkhan sought Nagash's staff by allying himself with Kalida of Liberus to attack the vampire Lord Mandragon in Sylvania. Arkhan acquired one of Nagash's lesser staffs, and soon learned the location of his primary staff Alakanesh, Britonia. Though being undead and serving Nagash dulled his emotions and killed his libido, Arkhan still loved Queen Neferita for all that time. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for Kumja models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and dnd 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. The end times with the coming of the end times, Arkhan made his move to try and find Nagash's staffy backed Malobord's coup which resulted in Britannia's civil war. 
which was a failure for Arkhan due to the intervention of the Wood Elves and the return of Giles Le Breton. Since he already had two of Nagash's books, he entered Sylvanvia seeking the rest of them, but Manford took exception. After an amazing duel that resulted in a stalemate, they called a truce and the two formed an alliance. After much politicking, they arranged the plan to retrieve Nagash's treasures, with him and Manford leading several armies. Arkhan was the one who broke them out of the Wall of Faith trapping them in Sylvania through an ancient ritual. Manford had the power but lacked the knowledge of how to use it. The second time Arkhan tried to retrieve the staff he had to kill Kemla for it because the necromancer had betrayed Nagash to serve the Chaos Gods. In the battle Arkhan lost one of the few things he cared about, a zombified cat he had adopted. Despite repeated assassination attempts from beastmen led by Malaga and Manford's vampire knights, Arkhan succeeded in Nagash return to the world. During this time, Arkhan also established himself as a hero killer, killing Kemla, Magical Duel, the Fey Enchantress, slit her throat and bled her out as the sacrifice to bring Nagash back, Iltharion, aged to dusk by magic, and Nekaf, incinerated by magic. During the war on Hecara he took all the undead and Nagashiza and conquered Merrick and Quata, the latter in a big off-screen battle that's barely alluded to. At Kemri, he was the visible commander of Nagash's armies and managed to do all right despite being outmatched. Eventually he was cut in half by Setra and magically smuggled Nagash into Kemri within his own body. Arkhan's bisected body was taken to ritual that was supposed to stop Arkhan from being brought back, but one of the priests was a mole for Nagash. After the battle for Kemri ended with Setra's defeat and its destruction, Arkhan was made whole again and permitted to go to war wherever he wanted at the behest of his master once more. Now the Mortark of Sacrament. Trading in his old chariot for the dread abyssal Razorak, the doom of traitors, Arkhan still serves Nagash with dedication in his actions. Though for the first time in millennia he started having second thoughts. When Nagash entered his sarcophagus to absorb the wind of death after conquering the Hekhara, Arkhan led the undead in his absence. When Isabella and the Nameless attacked, Arkhan showed some tactical savvy and organized the defense but was defeated after a vicious fight with Isabella and killed. After the destruction of the Black Pyramid Nagash was furious over Arkhan's failure, but knew Arkhan was reliable and intelligent so Nagash restored him and Krell. When Nagash traveled to Athol or to work with the living, Arkhan was silent but snickering to himself about the irony of Nagash's situation. Apart from some witty banter with Vlad, Arkhan is the one who speaks to the incarnates on Nagash's behalf because Nagash doesn't want to, making Arkhan an effect the mouth of Sauron. After a fight with the forces of the Chaos Gods, the incarnates and their forces are sent to Medenheim. Hilariously enough, while becoming the undead turns a person into an insufferable ass 99 times out of 100, it seems that it had reverse effects on Arkhan, who transformed from a degenerate wastrel and womanizer into a more or less decent human being, with actual standards and pragmatic thought. Too bad that his sovereign was a sociopathic retard. For example, when they launched an invasion to the north to capture chaos-infested Midenheim, they encountered captive soldiers and civilians. Arkhan suggested to free and arm them, and use them as auxiliary army. And this would also be a PR move aimed at the living, with message being see being undead doesn't necessarily mean that you're a malevolent cretin. Of course, Nagash being Nagash, just killed them and turned them into zombies. Arkhan then helps to coordinate Nagash's army, just as Throg came with an army of monsters. Nagash told Arkhan to take two more guest hosts and hold them until dead. When Arkhan asked for any further instructions he sensed Nagash's doubt before Nagash said, Die well my servant, and abandoned him, to Arkhan's consternation in the Gamma book, but his relief in the novel. Though it ends with Arkhan fighting, it's repeated that it's a fight he can't win. In the Lord of the End Times novel, after the Incarnates failed to stop the rift, Neferita encountered Arkhan with an unconscious Isabella. Arkhan had survived Nagash's last order and driven back the army of chaos monsters, with the unexpected help of Setra, but he was batted. Arkhan told her that Aelithra's magic gave him a vision of a mysterious figure who could save restore the world even after it was destroyed, and that he would help them if he could. 
Arkham then showed her his slowly disintegrating hand. With Nagash's destruction Arkham was dying as well. He bade Ifara to flee and try to avoid the world destruction and take Isabella with her, stating he thought it was possible she could survive the end of the world. Neferita kissed him, took Isabella and fled while Arkham tried to buy her time with his magic. As Neferita escaped, there was a last burst of purple magic and she could no longer sense him and grieved, thinking him destroyed. OTP confirmed. Age of Sigma with the world's reconstruction and Age of Sigma. Arkhan's back is bound to Nagash and it's confirmed while Nagash exists, so does Arkhan. He fought alongside Nagash when the latter was allied with Sigma, and followed him after Nagash's betrayal. When Nagash fell against Archaeon, Arkhan led the counter-attack where Nagash's body was retrieved along with thwarting the treachery of Prince Vhorde. However, the novel Nagash, the Undying King implies that he is not the same. Now Arkhan seems to have no memory of the previous world. One theory was that this is not the original Arkhan, either a construct made from Nagash's memory of Arkhan or another person who took up the mantle. Like one of the theories about Farsight before it was revealed he's the same guy with life-stealing sword. Now it's either he simply has a creation of a new world hangover that made him forget his previous life or Nagash stole some of Arkhan's memories. In the novel Soul Wars. It's confirmed that this is the original Arkhan and he's at least partially playing dumb. He plays the loyal servant so well that the other Mortarks, and occasionally Nagash himself, forget that he's his own person and not just a neutral avatar of Nagash. This lets him get away with making his own moves and their endless politicking almost entirely undetected. Arkhan was at Nagash's side when the latter abandoned Sigma's alliance and during the fights against the forces of chaos. When Nagash was killed by Archaeon in the Battle of Burning Skies, it was Arkhan who thwarted Hore's treacherous attempt to give Nagash to the Chaos Gods. Arkhan defeated the vampire and imprisoned him in a gravestone sarcophagus until Nagash returned. He also showed up in the Age of Sigma audiobook The Bridge of Seven Sorrows complete with a voice actor. He'd stayed in Stygx when Manfred and the Stormcasts of the Hallowed Knight Center to find Nagash. They are stopped at the other side of the bridge by Arkan and his steed, Raznak. Arkan called Manford Schema, ingrate and fearful before ordering him to leave. Tassa started to give his message, but Arkan told them he knew it was from Sigma, that Nagash didn't want to hear it or have anything to do with Sigma and ordered the Stormcast Eternals to leave or he'd be forced to kill them. When they persisted Arkan seemed to admire them, but still summoned seven Banshees to kill the Stormcasts. Staying on the sidelines until Manford attacked him with Arkhan fighting back with relish. Arkhan managed to beat Manford back then Tarsus joined the duel and forced Arkhan onto the defensive. Manford took advantage of the distraction to cut of Arkhan's sword hand, run him through and hurl him against the bridge. Despite his injuries Arkhan wasn't vanquished, but got to his feet and explained that the entire confrontation was a test. Shortly after Nagash himself arrived to handle the situation and Arkhan stood aside to let Nagash handle things. Later on Arkhan inadvertently helped the Stormcast by trying to capture Manford while he's dueling the Relict Aramis. Manford fled and Arkhan claimed to have a message from Sigma. He was also present with the third meeting of the Stormcast Eternals seeking Nagash's help, where he pretended to lose control of a Tarorgist as part of a test Nagash had for them. Later, Arkhan provided undead reinforcements when they went to thwart Manford's latest schemes. After pushing back the forces of chaos, Arkhan was put in charge of gathering gravestone for Nagash's Great Black Pyramid. During this time, Arkhan's revealed to have his own plan to deal with chaos. Arkhan tried to use the renewed conflicts between the forces of Azer and Shaiish to manipulate both Nagash and Sigma into joining forces against chaos. As he figured that after the two gods slap each other around a bit and vent their anger that they'll eventually kiss and make up enough to unite against chaos again, which is lampshaded by Manford. Arkan correctly surmised that the chaos gods would only take the renewed conflicts between them as a moment to strike again after their defeat in the Rearmgut Wars, and noted that the Pantheon had made their biggest gains against chaos when united. One gets the impression that since becoming undead, 
Arkhan would have been quite the noble and clever hero if he wasn't loyal to an omniscient sociopathic god. With the completion of Nagash's latest pet project, Arkhan has been given an entire legion of Bonner Reapers for his use. The magic resistant Null Myriad. His most recent mission has been to invade Ish at the head of a Bonner Reaper army and, forcibly, enlist some local mordant courts to conquer the great nation of Ametrica. While Manford and Neferit are brought living captives as sacrifices to power their spells, such as Arkhan's sorceress might, he didn't need sacrifices, just his own power. Arkhan tried to corrupt a rearmgut leading to Hish, but was repelled by the Lumineth. He fled to a second rearmgut at the edge of Hish and attempted to corrupt that one, only to be thwarted by a Lumineth army led by the light of Eltharian looking for some payback. Arkhan remembered Eltharian and why he'd come before the two engaged in a short but vicious fight, which ended with Arkhan being hurled from the edge of Hish, with Razorak rushing to him before both Arkhan and his steed disappearing in a burst of light magic. It's heavily implied Arkhan will return, especially since he returned despite the destruction of the world that was and law hinting he will exist as long as Nagash does. Manford even indicates that he's certain Arkhan will be back. And Manford both hates Arkhan and would relish him being killed once and for all. But it's unknown when it will happen. Neferit outwardly doesn't seem bothered that Arkhan fell, but called out Catacris for being such a buzzkill she almost misses Arkhan.